Hi everyone, in today's video, I'll be showing you how I completed this spread, which is the final piece from my animal habitat RCs, pets or domestic animals. Now, um, if you're not sure what this series is about, basically, uh, this is the 10th piece in my uh, animal habitat art series. And what I wanted to achieve with this um, challenge or this art series is to have uh, or include as many animals as possible that we have in our beautiful world uh, that we share the planet with. I wanted to include as many of them as possible uh, in a range of spreads uh, in my sketchbook. Uh, and I had to do a lot of research and decide how I'm going to do it and how was I going to tackle this. So I decided to group them and I chose their habitats as the categories that I wanted to use. So I looked at a lot of research on where uh, different habitats and which animals live in those habitats. And finally, after a lot of time planning and researching and looking for royalty free reference photos, I was able to come up with 153 animals in total for all these spreads, all 10 uh, animal habitat uh, habitats that I use. So uh, basically, uh, there is a playlist uh, on my uh, homepage uh, of my channel if you want to see all the spreads. But basically, it's uh, like, for example, rainforest animals, marine animals, forest animals. There's 10 of them. So you can watch all of them if you'd like to see them. Or you can visit my website and have a look at just the final um, spreads of each of them on my in my gallery. Uh, they also update if you'd like to see them. So uh, basically what this series um, entailed or my process for this was uh, once I had all the reference photos, then I had to go about trying to plan how I put them onto each spread. Some of the spreads, like for example, the Savannah animals have got a double paint spread. This is an A4 size spread. A sketchbook that I'm using and some of them have a single spread like for example the spread is a single page spread so I had to use the reference photos that I had and place them or, or basically um, sketch them from the reference photos sketch all the animals and place them on the paper or on the page where they uh, look relatively uh, good and they uh, fit properly onto the paper some did have a bit of problems where they reached the edge of the paper and or in the edge of the page and parts of their feet maybe got cut off um, yeah but that was just something I had to deal with, with when I was doing the series and I just accepted that it's not going to be perfect um, I didn't want this uh, spreads or these spreads to be uh, hyper realistic they must be realistic to an extent that they must represent the animal that I'm trying to show and it must look like the animal that I'm drawing but I was not aiming for hyper realism where they look super realistic but I was paying close attention to shadows and highlights and body structure, fur texture, um, as well as scales, feathers, the shadows where the feathers overlap, all of that was taken into account as I was doing each of these animals. You can see as small as they are, I have included a lot of detail. So once I did the initial sketch in water soluble graphite pencil, just to avoid harsh graphite lines, um, I used a water soluble graphite pencil instead. And once I had all the animals sketched out, I started working animal by animal, but I planned on doing all of the animals, sketching them out first so that I know they all placed properly or on the page and then I started um, inking them using uh, Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. So there will be a list of all the supplies I'm using in the description box below. But um, basically I started using the Ink Tense Pencils and layering in, in the different colors and paying close attention to my reference photos, shadows, the highlights, the direction of the fur, the feathers, the overlapping of the feathers, the shadows beneath each feather as they overlap one another, all of that I was paying close attention to when I was doing um, the inking part of it. Once I was done with applying as much of the pencil as possible, I started using a either a liner brush or a round brush with a little bit of water. I do have a paper towel that I keep beside me which I keep dabbing my brush in after applying water just to remove excess water and then I start um, basically activating the intense pencils and the working area section by section as you can see in this particular uh, drawing I'm going from the beak and then I start working the lighter areas which is the blue of the feathers you can see I use the intense pencils the darker blues for the shadows of the feathers it's very important to pay close attention to your, ref to your reference photo and see um, how the feathers are placed where the shadows are 
uh, because we want to get to a certain degree of realism where the animal really looks like that particular animal. Um, so we need to pay close attention to the reference photo, pay close attention to the shadows and the highlights. Um, another tip to remember, like you'll see, uh, white is never always pure white. Uh, you need to take into consideration the environment that the animal is in. According to the reference, you'll have colors reflect over their fur or their feathers or their scales if it's a marine animal or ocean animal. So pay close attention to that and try to include uh, a bit of um, color to the white areas and not leave it completely white. The only areas that will be absolutely pure white are the absolutely bright highlights. Um, you can see when I'm going through with the ink tents, I'm doing one layer, letting it dry. If I need to come through with more multiple layers after that and add more texture for the fur, in this case with the animals with fur, then I start adding more layers. Once it's I let it uh, first add the layers, use the water, activate it, let it dry completely, or use a hairdryer if you want to speed up drying time, and then add the next layer. Never uh, try to use the ink tents pencils on wet paper. You're going to get a lot of uh, dark um, application of ink which will become difficult for you to uh, blend out and you can also damage the paper. So let it dry completely before going in with another layer and once it's done I just come through with a uh, white gel pen. This is the jelly roll just to add those brightest highlights in the eyes and if there's any area that needs white um, highlights or maybe whiskers then I just use that for the drawing. So as you can see, I'm working section by section. Um, it's very important to also um, place your animals correctly on the paper so that they all can fit because and to have them all drawn out before you start, like I said I do, uh, just to avoid having animals that will not fit on the paper or you're leaving out a certain animal. I did have a problem uh, in my farm animals where I actually forgot about the donkey and I wanted to include a donkey so I had to re or basically shift the animals around and redraw them just so that I could include all the animals because as I said I wanted to include as many of the animals as possible and especially all the popular animals and the well-known animals I wanted to include them as well as some of the animals that are not so common. Um, you'll see there's a lot of animals that I've included here which are not really common animals um, but I've included them as well because they're all part of our planet and we share this planet with them and they are what make the planet uh, beautiful. So they are an important part of our planet as well as the environment. So you can see now I'm working with the goldfish I just finished too. Now I'm going on to the better fish. Um, these take a lot of time. Uh, each of these spreads, I think for a single page spread, took me roughly three to four hours, depending on the spread. Uh, so a double page, page spread usually took about eight hours. Um, I wasn't trying to rush anything and keep it standard. I was just wanted to include the animals and represent them as best I could and also avoid making mistakes. Because we're working with ink tents, you can make mistakes easily and they're difficult to cover up. So it's ink, so it's permanent. So we don't want to... Um, make any mistakes. So take your time if you want to do something like this um, Whatever you're drawing whether it's a, something with multiple animals or just a single animal portrait take your time with it don't rush with it because um, At the end you want to be uh, happy and not be stressed with the process So take your time work on it slowly if it takes you a couple of days like I said this series took me a couple of months I started sometime middle of the year with it and I'm only done with it now in December so don't um, feel that you have to complete it in a few days. Don't, don't, you don't have to put that pressure on yourself if you don't have to. Uh, just take your time. I mean, it took me months to do this because I was working uh, with other projects in between this one and I was just working a little bit on this whenever I got the chance. So uh, that's how basically I did this um, entire art series. So now we're going on to the last animal or the last... Um, from the series and this dog was also a lot of fun to draw as I said I enjoyed drawing each and every animal I learned so much because I learned about their body structure muscle structure skeletal structure shadows highlights the textures of the fur the feathers the scales no matter what animal it was even the insects that I've drawn um, like the ladybugs or the flies or the bees 
uh, or the locusts, they all were so interesting to learn how to draw them and how to uh, basically represent them in the series. So I guess that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the series. Um, if you have, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to like and share. And don't forget to subscribe. Till the next one. Bye.